Greetings, you're listening to or watching and or watching Cantus Firmus. Um, my name is Cody Cook and this is... Ava Cook. Ava Cook. She is nine years old. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm just kidding. I know you're nine. And uh, she's my daughter. We've been homeschooling for a few years now. You did preschool at a building, right? And that was I did kindergarten at a building. You did? And then in first and grade? In first grade, I did um, homeschooling. You got it. And then I did homeschooling until I was nine. Mm-hmm. So, um, so what have you thought about homeschooling so far, by the way? I think it's really fun. Yeah. Me, me and my dad do math, like times tables, subtraction, division, mm -hmm. and all of that, multiplication. Mm -hmm. So did you, so basically maybe before we get too into this, um, so we I've got Ava here because uh, I get a lot of friends and, and people I run into and I learn that I homeschool. They're curious about it, um, and this has especially been true I think since COVID. You know, COVID inspired a lot of parents to look into homeschooling, uh, whether because they wanted to quarantine their kids from COVID or because uh, they and their kids hated the kind of online stuff. So we got into homeschooling before COVID started, mm -hmm. but we have a lot of friends and family. Who they had to, they sent their kids home. And they had to sit in front of a computer screen for nine hours and, and talk, listen to a teacher talk. I thought that was very annoying. <laughs> yeah, well, you didn't have to do it, thankfully. Mm -hmm. But um, so, but all these kind of reasons. Sometimes parents heard stuff that they didn't really care for that some of the teachers were saying for political or religious reasons. Um, and so, yeah, our, our experience was a little different. So, I went to public school all through grade school and junior high and high school, and. I, it kind of made me feel really rebellious because I felt like they had a really kind of constrained approach to education. You always had to sit in a certain place and you had to ask permission to go to the bathroom and you had to learn all this stuff whether you liked it or not. And so anyway, it, uh, it felt a bit like, uh, uh, you know, herding kids like cattle, you know, you, the bell rings, you go to the next place. So, uh, you know, in, in most public schools, every child is taught basically the same way, even if it's not effective for them. Um, for a lot of them and they're forced to memorize information that seems irrelevant that they usually quickly forget they're tested and graded like meat right mm -hmm. uh and if it, and and if you screw up and you fail you get a failing grade but you don't necessarily get helped mm -hmm. right and also being graded i think stinks yeah because then you are like ah, ah, i have to get good grades yeah so if you don't understand something we just keep working through it, right? Mm -hmm. I don't say, F, you lost, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so it's kind of a better way, I think, for to do it, right? It's not quite so stressful. So it takes some of the stress out of learning. Yeah, and I think that that's ultimately because of the way that a lot of schools do it. Kids mm -hmm. learn to hate learning because they think of it as sort of boring and difficult and it stresses them out. And then sometimes there'll be clicks and bullies and that makes it even worse to be in school, right? And you had a, you dealt with a little bit of that too when you were in school, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, not too much, thankfully. But that was another reason that your mom and I were kind of concerned because we had friends who took their kids out of public school because of a lot of bullying that the schools weren't really doing anything about. Mm -hmm. And we thought, you know, that would really stink if Ava was at school and she started getting bullied and then, you know, we kicked her out, took her out of school and then she sort of I don't know, I, I, wanted to, I wanted it to be a good reason to homeschool, not just because we were trying to hide from bad guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, did you have something to say? Let me think. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now I remember. Okay. It was, I was bullied in school in kindergarten. In kindergarten. It was, there, was a couple, there were a couple of bullies who were kind of mean to a lot of the kids, weren't there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's one that always, every single day, slapped me. Really? You never told me that. Are you sure not misremembering a little bit? I mean, I might. I don't <laughs> totally okay. remember. Yeah, but either way, I know you're right. There were there were kids who were could be mean, and mm -hmm. right, that happens. Right, right. That's kind of it's pretty stinky. Some people say that that's what you're supposed to. You're supposed to go to school and get bullied, and it makes you stronger. But I don't know if I believe that. Nope, me neither. <laughs> so, but th these are the kind of concerns that that I had uh, about what's called the Prussian model of education. It's something that. In America, we sort of imported from overseas, and it was this kind of uh, approach to teaching kids that was about kind of making good soldiers and factory workers. Um, and so these concerns also led to uh, an award-winning teacher and educator, John Taylor Gatto. He wrote a book um, about this, his, his decision to leave the public education system uh, called Dumbing Us Down. 
And if you're listening or watching this, I assume you're a little curious about homeschooling. You may not be as down on public education as Gatto was and as I often am. But you may have other concerns that simply make homeschooling appear to be a more attractive alternative to the standard way of doing things. He's interested in something? Mm -hmm. I was just looking at the three-headed snake. The three-headed snake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so here's some reasons that, that uh, people often cite as reasons to homeschool. One is a specialized or more flexible education. So for us, Ava, sometimes there's things that you're not too interested in learning about. Or there are certain ways that's harder for you to learn. Mm -hmm. Like one of the things you really love to do is like listen to audiobooks and stories, right? Uh huh. And I like to read about dinosaurs and mm -hmm. dragons. Yep. So let's say that's a good point. So if you're in school, public school, and they're teaching you how to read, they're going to make you read a lot of stuff that you're not going to be interested in. It's going to yeah, make reading like, seem kind of boring. Like um, <clears throat> journal, not journals, but um, like like big graphic novels and stuff like that except not graphic novels but like <laughs> sciencey ones not Maybe. fiction oh you say th things that you like you're talking about because you, you i knew like the, the, we, there was one thing we were just reading was a sciencey graphic novel right about dinosaurs mm -hmm. yeah except i don't like like big ones that are completely different from like legends and like gotcha. dinosaurs so it's hard it's hard to really be and also herpetology herpetology yeah okay. yep. yep. Ava's looking forward to being a herpetologist someday a reptile specialist but yeah so there's a lot of stuff when you're trying to learn they're, they're making you read all kinds of stuff you're not interested in and it makes it seem kind of boring doesn't it mm -hmm. yeah and also <laughs> my favorite um snake yeah is the two-headed snake yeah it's very rare yeah that's, yeah, I've, yeah, I've seen the, the Sometimes, video usually, there's two in one egg, mm -hmm. and usually they come out two, mm -hmm. but sometimes they'll, sometimes if it's trying to form a miracle of two, mm -hmm. sometimes the process doesn't completely go, and it, oh. and it forms a two-headed. Like when there's like twins that are dividing, it doesn't happen all the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, so if you're in public school, they'd make you learn to read by reading a bunch of stuff you're not interested in. So we were able to do something, maybe a little more flexible. We could say, well, Ava, we got to we gotta have you read, and reading's important. Mm -hmm. But what we'll do is we'll let you read stuff you're really interested in. Mm -hmm. So that might like be... about dinosaurs or yeah. about reptiles. Or Captain Underpants you really like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes you like to read comics. I know you have, like, Garfield and Calvin and Hobbes you like to read sometimes. Mm -hmm. Oh, and um, Investigators. Mm-hmm. Which are these two crocodiles who are gators, mm -hmm. who actually are investigators. Yeah. So they're called investa gators. Yeah. So these are <laughs> those are all good examples of things that make you excited about reading, uh -huh. right? So so that's one of the things about public schooling. If you're in, in sorry, public schooling, you, you can't do that. You kind of have to go along with what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. But homeschooling, we can sort of make it more flexible for what you're interested in, right? Mm -hmm. And so you still learn how to do all the same things, but you learn it in a way that makes it that makes learning fun. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's other reasons people like to homeschool. Another reason uh, people sometimes cite is what they call indoctrination, that there's different ideas in, in, in public schools that are taught that they might not like. Mm -hmm. There might be like maybe like some anti-religious bias or certain political bias, uh, either right wing, left wing, whatever. Uh, so those things can be concerning for, um, for a lot of parents. Some parents might want to teach their kids about religion, right? So maybe they're Muslim or Christian or Jewish, and they want their kids to know about that stuff, but they're not going to get that at public school. Mm -hmm. And so that's another reason why sometimes parents will teach. And we do a little bit of that too, don't we? Because we, we talk about Christianity and the Bible, right? But we also are careful, I think, to try to teach it in a way that makes you think a little bit critically, which is also really important. Like right now, we were just reading... This book, Case for a Creator for Kids. So there was a book by Lee Strobel called The Case for a Creator where he goes into the arguments that uh, scientists and philosophers make, some scientists and philosophers make for why God exists. And he uh, makes it accessible for kids. But as we read it, we'll ask questions with each other. We'll sort of say, does that make sense? What, some, what might somebody say if they were disagreeing with that? So that's kind of helpful. Sure, you want to talk about an example about what was in here today? Sure, go ahead. So... Today in, um, hold on, will you hand me the book? Yeah. Um, in Case for a Creator for Kids, um, let me look, it was where, uh, oh, here. <laughs> yeah. So we're talking about DNA, was that what we were thinking about? Um, we were thinking about DNA, but also, mm -hmm. 
there, there are these two um, scientists. Or the teachers. Teachers. Yeah. There's the science teacher who mm -hmm. is like against religion and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Sunday school um, teacher mm -hmm. who's like all for God. Yeah. And so they had different explanations for how the universe mm -hmm. came to exist. And so the author was asking, were they both wrong? Like, is one uh, of them wrong? Could they both be what right? Was the, name, the, big, uh, the Big Bang Theory? Big Bang? Yeah. That's what um, the um, Sunday... The science teacher. Science teacher yeah. believed. And the Sunday school teacher was talking about Genesis, right? Where God created everything. Mm -hmm. So the author was trying to figure out maybe there's ways that we could... That both of those could be true, right? So that well, became a conversation. I think there was like two scientists and one Sunday school. Maybe. Yeah, like the other scientist who... Um, didn't have, who was against the Big Bang Theory, mm -hmm. um, was like, hey, that's not the right one. It's like a different theory. Okay, so that, that wasn't in the book. That was something we talked about. That right. they, before the Big Bang Theory became popular, a lot of scientists who were atheists, right. who didn't believe in God, they had the steady state theory that the universe had always existed. And the Big Bang Theory sounded too much like God to them, mm -hmm. that the universe begins to exist. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's, yeah, that, so, so these are kind of conversations that we can have, which is really neat. Um, and we'll, we'll talk more about resources and things that we use here in a little bit. So, um, so other reasons that people might uh, want to homeschool, negative social influences. Unfortunately, you send your kids to school and there are other, uh, you know, parents, other kids there who may have, uh, I don't want to say naive parents, but uh, parents who give them smartphones without uh, any restrictions. And they discover a lot of uh, horrible things that they shouldn't be seeing at that age, and they share them with other kids at school. Um, uh, also, bullying is an issue. So there's a lot that could be uh, a really negative social influence in the school that might make you want to pull back a little bit. You can't keep your kids from everything bad in the world, but uh, you can try to kind of protect them a little bit from certain things that they really, that really wouldn't be helpful for them. Um, I think in addition. Uh, one of the things that people talk about how homeschool kids are, are weird sometimes because they have their interests, they're excited. As you can hear, Ava is uh, loves to talk about the things she's interested in. And public school has a tendency sometimes to crush that in kids, uh, you know, because they, uh, they aren't really allowed to uh, really pursue the things they're interested in. It's very regimented. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, one of the things I love is that Ava can really think about the things she's interested, that she wants to do. She can pursue those things. She can grow in those areas. Uh, and I think she's growing in a really healthy way. So th I, those are those are positives uh, for me and, and have to do with reasons why I like homeschooling and why a lot of other folks think about it. Now, there are different models. So as, as you look into these, you're going to find different examples. One is what's called the school at home. So a lot of homeschooling purists think about homeschool not as uh, just teaching at home, but a, they have there's a whole philosophy attached to it. Yep. And that philosophy is kind of anti-public schooling. So if what you do at home is to follow the public school model, but just do it at home, like they say, like some people who are in like house churches will say like church at home is not house church. If you can, if it's the same thing you do at a, at a church building, but you do it at a house, it's not the same, you know, you're not really doing something different. Mm -hmm. So school at home is public school at home. When we started, your mom and I were kind of scared to figure out how to do this on our own. So we started with something called K-12. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Yeah, where we had to use the little one. Laptop thing. Yeah, yep, yeah, they gave this on a laptop, which is pretty cool. So it's a like public schooling, but you get to do it at home, mm -hmm. right? And we found that it was better in some ways, but still kind of restrictive because they wanted to spend a certain amount of time on stuff. And sometimes we'd be zooming past stuff and we'd have to lie and say we were spending more time on it than we were, which didn't really feel right. And it, so it was really stifling. So we wanted something a little more flexible. Um, so some we also have friends who like to buy these big curriculum sets. And we don't really do that. We like to kind of get things a la carte based on what we see as the needs uh, uh -huh. at the time. So that's school at home. Uh, not necessarily knocking it, but it's 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 not really a different philosophy. It's just... Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I don't want to send you in for math sheets right now because we're in the middle of recording. But I will say you have been doing excellent math. Mm -hmm. So I'll, just, I'll brag on you, okay? Mm -hmm. um, okay. So... Um, other models, there's the uh, the Montessori method that was uh, uh, created by Maria Montessori. Uh, she has a book actually called The Montessori Method that you could check into. And that's more of a self-guided approach um, to education. And you can actually see that not just in homeschools, but also in buildings that have these different sort of uh, philosophies of education. There's also unschooling. Um, a book I'd recommend on that is a book by Connor Boyack called Passion Driven Education. 
and the idea for unschooling is kind of what we talked about a little bit earlier that um you tune into instead of being having this, these kind of rigorous approaches and in, in, in curriculums um or curricula what you do is you sort of allow the child the child's passions and interests to guide the education so it's not exactly self-guided necessarily like montessori is it can be um but more 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 than that is the parent is kind of a a guide to help the because they have a little more information and knowledge to help the kid sort of figure out um how to bloom based on what they're interested in and, and sort of uh you know so instead of saying today that we're going to do all this reading uh and we're going to teach you how to read and write it might be hey we're really interested in dinosaurs so let's uh, read a book about dinosaurs today that kind of thing mm -hmm. uh, there's the classical approach um there's a, a book or an essay dorothy sayers wrote called the lost tools of learning the classical approach is basically the medieval approach to education. So pre-Prussian model, uh, and you might be surprised to learn that the way you, that you were taught in school, the Prussian model is not the way that's always been taught. So the uh, basically the idea is that you sort of build um, based on the child's uh, capabilities. So you start grades K through four with facts, repetitions, songs, chants, uh, grades like five through eight around there. You do more critical reasoning type stuff debate, argument, discussion. And then in kind of the high school years, um, it's a little more rhetoric, speeches, questioning, that kind of stuff. So um, th that's the that's the more classical uh, approach. Uh, and Dorothy Sayers' book, The Lost Tools of Learning, gives a, gives a, a defense and argument for that. <laughs> As we're doing this, Ada's drawing, I think, a dinosaur. Dinosaur or dragon? Um, actually, it's dinosaur bones. Dinosaur bones, okay, cool. Uh, and then th there are other models we could talk about. Those, I think, are the, some of the more popular ones and more well-known. Uh, but what I'll, I'll sort of say is our approach is what I might call an eclectic approach. So um, from the sort of school at home, you know, Prussian model or whatever, one thing we take is uh, that, you know, some things you're going to have to learn whether you're excited about them or not. We'll try to make them exciting, but unfortunately you're going to have to learn your addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and uh, uh, you know fractions, whatever, a little bit of algebra, that kind of stuff. Maybe not trigonometry, but you know, some stuff you're going to have to learn whether you like it or not. Um, so I, I think there's some value in that, um, some value in the kind of you know drilling and repetition. Uh, but at the same time, as outlined before, there's a lot of flaws too with with that approach. Uh, the Montessori self-guided method, uh, and maybe I'll kind of combine that with the unschooling method. We've, we've got a lot from that as well. Primarily what we've gotten is that we need to tailor uh, Ava's education so that she will be excited about learning and that she can learn the most that she can with the best attitude and most productively happiest. Um, so that, that's what we've gotten from that. Uh, the classical approach I'm, I've been interested in and curious about. Um, one thing that I think we've taken from that a little bit is the repetition and the songs. Sometimes that's helpful, especially for math. Um, I'll, I'll link to um, uh, a couple videos that we've used that take sort of popular kid songs and uh, use it as a, a guide for learning your multiplication table. <laughs> and I, I do remember my sixes. Remember your sixes? Six, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. 42, 48, 56, 61, oh, 54, 60, 66, 72, 78, 84, 90. Very good. That's a, so that's a great example of where the classical model is helpful. Mm -hmm. So you, I would encourage you, if you're interested, maybe to pick up a couple of these books. Uh, the Boyack book, Passion Driven Education, Montessori's book, The Montessori Method, Sayer's book, uh, The Lost Tools of Learning, and give it some thought, digest it a little bit. And um, as you're thinking about what it is that maybe is in that sort of traditional model of school at home, what, is, what are the things that we're going to have to teach? Um, I think that really depends on your education philosophy and what you're trying to get out of it. Um, some of the uh, you know, unschooling purists <laughs> would say, if your kid doesn't want to read until they're 12 years old, that's fine. They don't have to read. I don't love that idea. Um, 
I know that it worked for Woodrow Wilson, who had kind of almost like an unschooling approach, and he didn't learn to read until he was 10 years old, and he became a, a successful, if not despised by some, president. Um, <laughs> but, but I still feel like uh, certain things are important for kids to do, no matter what. you got to clean your room. you got to learn addition and subtraction. <laughs> you got to learn to read. Um, anyway, so as far as resources... Uh, I would repeat that whatever they're interested in is an opportunity. So if um, you're struggling to get them interested in math, um, maybe um, <laughs> you, you find ways, I think we did this once, uh, uh, Godzilla bit off one of Ghidorah's three heads. How many heads did he have left? Two. Yeah. So you find ways to see how our eyes lit up when I mentioned Ghidorah. The, the monster that, from the, the Godzilla movies. Mm -hmm. So you, you find ways to make that interesting. Or Ava doesn't always like to write very much. Mm -hmm. But sometimes if we give her something interesting to write about. Like or... dinosaurs. Yeah. And I write letters to my friends sometimes. Yeah. Friends and family. So those are opportunities to get her to write. Now she's writing. We can look and say, hey, use your meatball spaces between words. Those are the larger spaces than your spaghetti spaces between letters. Or, oh, that's really good. But I noticed a little uh, a little spelling error. Let's really try to fix that real quick. You know, so those give you opportunities, but it makes it a lot less painful. So whatever they're interested in is an opportunity. And, and I think that's that's one thing I would say. In addition to that, though, you're going to want to find some some helpful resources. One thing that we used a lot early on and a little bit less now is this book, Home Learning Year by Year. And what this is, is it actually tells you uh, what a kid in you know public school would basically know by grade four, grade three, grade two. And you can use that as a guide and say, you know, because on the one hand, we want Ava to develop, you know, naturally and not every kid's going to develop in the same way or learn in the same way. Grow in the same way. Very nice. I like the picture. Ichthyosaurus plus Velociraptor equals that. I like it. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, it is kind of helpful to think, you know, if Ava's going to be hanging out with other kids, is there, are they going to be way ahead on something? So we use this as a kind of a, a guideline to make sure that Ava's kind of doing well, uh, that she's where she needs to be. More often than not, she's ahead. But every so often, I'll think, oh, we haven't really talked about this part of history that a third grader might be expected mm -hmm. to know, so we'll spend a little time on it. So that this is a home learning year by year by Rebecca Rupp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'll also put it over here. Okay, thank you. Uh, another thing, like I said, every kid is different, right? And they all learn in different ways. Ava loves audiobooks. So there's I a... I have um, Story of Civilization. Mm -hmm. um, and I listened to that. It was how civilization got started. And what happened after years, years and years. Mm -hmm. So Story of Civilization mm -hmm. is a book by a Catholic author named Philip Campbell. And it's kind of a counterpart in a way to this book series, Story of the World by Susan Wise Bauer. Uh, Bauer is kind of more, uh, she's Christian, Protestant, but not necessarily hit you over the head with it. Uh, and her books were really useful. We've used them. Um, and they're nice when we kind of want to sit and read together. Uh, however, they aren't on Audible. Uh, as far as I can tell, you can't find an audiobook for them. Uh, but this other book series, A Story of Civilization by Campbell, uh, is an audio audiobook. And it's really well produced. There's kind of music and sound effects. Mm -hmm. And Ava like, likes to... <laughs> yeah. So Ava likes to listen to that at bedtime and when you're doing your art stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And so she's learned a lot from that. Now, she's learned so much quicker from that than she would from this. This is still valuable, but but if it were an audiobook, we'd be using it. It's not, so we're not. Because the author is Catholic and we're not Catholic, uh, it doesn't really matter in ancient times, but in the medieval period and modern period, there might be some things where we'll talk about discussions. Well, he says this, but he says that because he's Catholic. What do you think? Do you think he's wrong? Do you think he's right? I think he's kind of right. <laughs> yeah. So, th th those give, so that's another thing you want to be paying attention and engaged, but it's also great to give her things that she can listen to and enjoy. Um, another thing she really liked to listen to... Um, was Little House in the Big Woods and Little House in the Prairie. And she would listen to that incessantly. <laughs> and um, sometimes it would drive us a little crazy, but we loved that she was learning and that she liked it. And she learned a great deal about that kind of settler period of the United States, uh, how they made things, how they cooked things. She grossed out her mom by telling her how cheese is made. 
Um, so a lot of really, really neat stuff with that. <laughs> Another book that you really loved, a friend of ours recommended, who was also uh, homeschooling their kids, was Breaking Stalin's Nose. Mm -hmm. It's a historical fiction book about a kid growing up in the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. So that's really, that was really a fascinating book too. Mm -hmm. And you loved that one. Listen to that over and over again. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, another audio book that started, we got them as regular books. Are, are oh, these... And I know how chocolate is made. You know how what? Chocolate. Is chocolate made. is made. Okay, awesome. It's made of the sweet, bitter cocoa beans. Uh -huh. And at first it was a sour, tart drink mm -hmm. that the Egyptians drank. Uh -huh. And then over time, people, like these two people, stole the cocoa beans uh -huh. from them because they were looking for gold. We sure the Egyptians or the, Az or the Aztecs or the... Uh... Um, Aztecs. The Aztecs. Uh -huh. And then they stole it, and then they sold it to a man because they were kind of disappointed. And then they, and then it um, was served to the king, not king, but queen. Mm -hmm. And then um, they didn't like it, but eventually people mixed it with milk and sugar, and then it made the sweet, crunchy, delicious chocolate today. Very good. And that's from the story civilization. No, that's oh. from. Um, a thing called Bread Butter Shop. Oh, okay. So that's a cartoon Netflix. that you like on Netflix. Okay. But it also tells you how desserts are made because it's like a little, um, it has Wilkes dessert stories at the end. Yeah. And I think it's really fun. Yep. So you can learn from all kinds of things. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. So, okay. So another audio book series that we like that starts actually started on paperback is this series, The Tuttle Twins. Mm -hmm. And The Tuttle Twins is a really interesting, <laughs> is a really interesting series that's made for kids, um, Right around your age, I wouldn't give them to kids that are too young, but they kind of, um, what they do is they introduce uh, kind of a more libertarian philosophy about, uh, you know, the golden rule and not starting, not starting crap, <laughs> not initiating force against others. Uh, and it's been a pretty good series and they're all on audible book. So, or audio book and on audible. So we've, she's listened to a lot of them. Uh, she was able to uh, tell when she was, seven she was able to tell people what protectionism and in, in, in economies uh, is so uh, anyway so that that's that's a this has been a good series as well the Tuttle twins um what else um so ava is really good at math but she was resistant to it at first uh we did use some of these books learn math fast system which is a good uh, i think they they follow you up up through the years but we started with the first volume and it was a helpful way to kind of start thinking about uh, doing addition and subtraction and kind of get the, the, the idea of it in their head, the system. Also, Spectrum produces these little books on math, science, language arts, etc. cetera. Uh, and uh, these are nice because they're pretty cheap. They're like 10 bucks. Uh, they're kind of graded by, you know, grade three. This is this one here. And uh, it's a lot better, in my opinion, than having to buy a whole curriculum. <laughs> a lot cheaper, too. And you can kind of fit it in where it's needed. Um, what else? Uh, videos can be helpful. Um, SciShow Kids, the science uh, show for kids mm -hmm. channel. And also there's a guy who tests um, physics and stuff. His name is Mark Robber. Yeah. And you also really like the, uh, what's the reptile house in California? Um... J prehistoric pets. J's prehistoric pets. So she loves learning about that because she no, loves reptiles. J prehistoric pets. Okay, gotcha. Not J's. Uh, Operation Ouch is a, a video series produced in the UK that sh uh, it's a science show that's primarily about how your body works. Uh, and she's loved those, watched a lot of those. Uh, so the videos can be a useful tool. Um, also, Mr. Phil, which is Phil Vischer, who started Veggie Tales. He uh, has done other projects, and you can get them all on an app called Mr. Phil TV, uh, and that includes uh, What's in the Bible, which is this whole series where he introduces the Bible uh, in a really kind of fun way. Um, he also has uh, kind of introducing different books of the Bible, um, it, like kind of like in a Bible study kind of fashion, like First John, which don't sing the song because I know it's in your head. And uh, so there's a lot of cool stuff that Mr. Phil, uh, that Phil Vision. <laughs> That Phil Vischer does. So I recommend that as well. Uh, finally, The Bible Project. Uh, really good video series. Really well animated. Um, some of the content's a little more doubt, so you might want to check it out. But Ava enjoys that and like to watch those before bed a lot. Um, we mentioned different books that she enjoyed, like Captain Underpants. Really, like I said, it's an opportunity to learn. It's an opportunity to read. Um, don't knock it.
just because it's not, you know, boring, <laughs> uh, you know, whatever. Um, finally, not maybe not actually not finally, at least for, for books, the library. Uh-huh. Right. So we've gotten a lot of resources from the library uh, and your, your tax dollars are already paying for it. You might as well go and check them out and see what they've got that you might enjoy. You've gotten Captain Underpants books. You've gotten Reptile books. We've gotten audio books from there. Oh, actually, I will mention a couple more uh, books since I've got them in the stack here. Uh, talking about kind of a la carte, just kind of focusing on one topic. There are these, um, like the what is books or the who, what, where. I can't remember. The, some, they're like who was, what is. We, had, we read through this one, what is the Constitution, a year or so ago. Uh, and they're kind of neat because they focus on one little topic. Um, and also, if you are doing some religious education, especially in kind of the Christian field, I recommend getting a, um, a kind of a children's Bible or children's translation of the Bible. So this is the New International Reader's Version. Uh, and there's other versions as well that try to write in such a way that um, uh, you, kids can easily understand that the language is not too complex. Uh, we like to pull this pull this out around Christmas or Easter, and we'll kind of read through those those stories. Um, science. So I did mention the Spectrum has like the science worksheets, and we do those, which are which are good. Uh, but kids like to do experiments, right, Ava? Mm-hmm. I love doing experiments. So one thing we've uh, liked for that is little passports, and there's other companies that do this. They'll send you a, a science experiment every month. So you don't have to spend a lot of time online uh, researching ingredients and materials and, and different tests. They provide all that, so that's really neat. Um, I mentioned math songs earlier. I'll link to a, a couple of those. I, what I'll, actually, what I'll do is I'll link to anything here that I, I can link to that I've mentioned. I'll, I'll go ahead and provide a link in the notes. So if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, I don't have enough subscribers to put links in the video. So if you're watching, you should subscribe, and maybe the next video will have that. But you can go uh, to the to my website, cantus firmuscom and if YouTube will let me, I'll put all the links in the description uh, so you can check some of this stuff out. Um, we left out physical education, so we'll give some examples of that. You can always go outside and play. What we have done, because we had not been really up on the phys ed stuff like we should have been, uh, is we got Ava a membership to a trampoline park, which isn't too far from us. We were just there today. Mm-hmm. And that's a lot of fun. You get. And also, I hurt my butt testing physics. Testing physics. That'll happen. <laughs> I fell. <laughs> um, also, <laughs> chances are there's a park in your neighborhood. Kids like to go and play. We have a YMCA near us. I think it's one of the biggest in the country. Uh, and they do classes and camps. Uh, the first time Ava went to swim camp, she was exhausted. She was collapsed on the floor when we came to pick her up. But she, every day she got a little bit better and... Uh, um, so on, the la- on the last day, I was completely not tired. Yeah, uh, yeah you just keep doing it every day. It's good. Uh-huh. And I still am looking forward to doing. Yeah. Um, I'm swimming at my grandma Kelly's. Uh huh. And also this um, this um summer I want to do YMCA swim camp again. Okay. And this time I just want to do swim camp. Okay. Okay. Keep going. Uh, yeah, she had, she did archery last time too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. Also. If you are, you know, I'm sure you're part in a near a public school district or in a public school district. I love the picture. Leviathan, Godzilla, um, the Evil Queen, and then I have Ghidorah's mom, and then Ghidorah. Oh, baby Ghidorah. Very cute. <laughs> All right. He's a devil. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're got to be, I'm sure you're in a public school district. Uh, look into whether any of the public school sports are, will allow you as a homeschooler to come in. A lot of them will. You're already, your tax dollars are already going to that. Uh, costs, I think, on average, was it twelve or thirteen thousand dollars to educate a kid every year? So, if you're taking your kid out of the homeschool system <laughs> or out of the public school system, you're saving them a lot of money. So, might as well set, put your kid in, in sports if they're doing it. Uh, also, look for practical opportunities: balancing a checkbook, cooking, which is where we learn a lot of our fractions. Mm-hmm. And right? I like to bake cakes. Big cakes, yep. Yeah. Uh, going shopping together, doing housework, home improvement projects. This is the basic stuff that you're going to need to do in life. A lot of stuff you do in school uh, maybe is not totally necessary for real life living. It's just interesting or things that we think you ought to learn to be a good uh, citizen. A um, really cool toy that I really want. Yes. Is that relevant to this conversation, though? I'm sorry. That's okay. We'll save that for after, okay? But that is... Relevant to herpetology a little bit. Relevant to herpetology. Oh, yes, go ahead. I love snakes. Real quick. I love snakes, so my 
The toy I want is a robotic remote control co- remote control cobra. That would be pretty neat. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but I'd probably scare him with it a lot. Yeah. So, okay, let me wrap this up, okay, and then we'll okay. see if you have any thoughts at the end. Okay. Does that sound good? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but really, the question is, what are the things that you do in your day-to-day that, that you needed to learn, that that, um, that you couldn't function very well as an adult uh, if you didn't know how to do them? Teach those kids. T- teach teach uh, those things to your kids. Lynn, you know, live by example, mm-hmm. or lead by example. Uh, so that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Do you have any thoughts as we um. conclude? Let me think. But I do have some questions on science. On science? Is that something we can talk about after, though? Yeah. Okay. Do you have any thoughts about homeschooling? If someone were to ask you what you thought about it or if you'd recommend it. I think it's really good. And I've also, with being home, I can also work on drawing. Drawing. That's true. One thing that's really cool is I like to see you draw while you're listening to something. Yeah, that helps I usually those learn. I usually um, listen to stuff while I um, draw, <laughs> and usually I listen to something that's not relevant to this conversation. That's okay. While I play. Yeah. Can I ask you? Has homeschooling always been super easy, or do we ever have arguments or conflict? We do have arguments sometimes. Yeah. Like, like. At first, my um, um, grammar book, my grandma book, my dragon grammar book. Yeah, we bought a book called Dramer, uh, Dragon Grammar, right? Uh-huh. And also, but it has all these confusing questions, like um, like how commas work, and how commas work, like whether it's know, who or whom. We already ate snarls. Uh huh. Or but, we already ate snarls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if it had a comma. Mm-hmm. Right there, between the eight, after the eight, mm-hmm. it would be, we already ate, comma, snarls. That means we already, we ate because we were hungry, yeah. and you're saying that to snarls. And you were frustrated. You picked that up, and you looked at it, and you weren't that interested, right? So you had a little but bit of But once I started reading it, I thought it was really cool. Yeah. yeah. And and sometimes you'll find that, you know, you are going to, it's not, it's not a perfect solution, uh, but... I know when when you were real little, um, your mom and I both worked a lot, and she said that she felt like she were, you were going to grow up and go to school, and she wasn't going to see you anymore, and she'd lost all the time to spend with you. Mm-hmm. So now that we homeschool, she's mm-hmm. really excited that she gets to spend a lot more time And with also you. when she had her night job, mm-hmm. where she had to clean the building yes. all, na- like all night, uh-huh. she was like gone for the whole day. Yeah. Like she had to work at morning, and then she, then at like... Then she would come home for like dinner, and then yeah. she would quickly eat, and then she had to go yeah. back into her car in the freezing cold. Yeah. And then she had to drive all the way to the building, and then she had it clean. Mm-hmm. And that one was all the way next to the place where they make elevators. That's true, but none of this is totally relevant for this conversation. Nope. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. But the, the point being, it, it you know. If you can manage it, you do get more of that time with your kid. And it's really helpful. It's really good to have that. Um, And, uh, you know, homeschooling is a lot easier if you got a lot of money coming in. Like I said, we kind of had it. My wife and I had a more complicated work schedule that was more conflicting. Mm -hmm. And we've worked something out now that works better so that we can both be home some and homeschool. Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-huh. Like, usually on Mondays, you're working and mom's home. And Mm -hmm. then on two days, on Tuesdays, you guys... Mom okay. works more and Mom I'm home. Mom works more and you're home yeah. and then all And then that. we also have a, a friend. And then on Saturday and Sunday, you guys are home. Yep. But sometimes I don't always see you when you get home because I sometimes go to sleepovers. And we have some friends, more and more friends now because we, more people are homeschooling, where one of the parents, the father and the mother, does most of the homeschooling. Uh, I have, we have some where, uh, we, have, we, have a fam- we know of a family, friends of ours, who, where the grandmother uh, lives with them and she does a lot of it. And so you don't necessarily have to be super well off or affluent or not, uh, but but they're you know it may or may not work for you. But if, if you can make it work, it's it's valuable and it's rewarding. All right, thank you for joining Ava for the conversation. I appreciate what you brought to it. Mm-hmm. I love you, dude. Love you. Okay. Thank you and enjoy those uh, resources that I mentioned. Will be linked in the notes. Thanks.